when you build a, uh, a building, it is, it, is, it is a complex system of different components uh, that you have to assemble together that function very differently. For example, if you have a big hole where airflow can move, that big hole, in order for it to get out from a particular location, have to, has to go through many tiny little holes to achieve the outside. And, and, and that interconnectivity between uh, um, one deficiency in one part of the, uh, of the building to, the, uh, to, to carry itself all the way out to the outside. It, it's, it's, it's a complex network of, of, uh, of, of airflow movements. That's an example for airflow. But if you look at other elements, um, changing the windows, for example, and I'm going to a, a high performance window um, and not doing anything on the wall side of things, you're actually um, uh, not, not doing, uh, a, 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 you're not providing the benefit that you need to provide. Vice versa, high performance, envelope with bad windows, again, won't give you the performance. So there has to be a systems thinking when you put together a high performance building. You can't just rely on one technology. You can't use equipment to achieve high performance. You have to have the correct envelope, high performance envelopes with a lot of insulation, with insulation correctly placed in the right locations with the control elements. And we've seen buildings that executive homes in, in, in North Carolina in 1996, you know, fail within six months. And that's not what we want to do. We want to have a, um, a high performance, durable building uh, that's going to be around for a long, long, long time. When we talk about, for example, uh, a high performance wall system, um, well, uh, when, when we, it isn't just the insulation that you place in, in that wall that dictates the air tightness. It's, it's it's much more complicated than that. Airflow doesn't move from the inside through the wall to the outside. It, 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 it's a lot more elaborate, more, more uh, complicated than that. We have moved um, forward in, in a big way in, in helping the builder and our contractors uh, understand the implications of, of how uh, not only a product works, but how we could maximize its e efficiency and effectiveness in terms of a system. So we're out there helping them out in understanding how to put together systems. Air sealing was not even in the vocabulary that five years ago. Now air sealing is, is an integral part. They can't achieve the energy efficiencies that we expect them to achieve uh, for, for 2012, for example, where there's a requirement to have uh, uh, tests done, uh, blow door tests done on every home to uh, quantify the amount of airflow that is moving in and out of that building. And actually, um, Owens Corning did this uh, very important study that is published out there and uh, the Air Bear Association of America has it posted on online where it shows that after 1,070 tests that were done, we found out that, that there are key areas uh, where air, air flow is moving through the wall. And even if you've um, sealed every little gap in, in, and that would be miles in a home, uh, you are not necessarily guaranteed to, to, to provide a good air tightness if you just did it on the wall. It is the can lights, it is the joists around the joist areas, it is all those areas that go above and beyond the top or bottom of the wall where, where most of the airflow is happening. So by just focusing and getting misinformed that using a particular insulation that will provide you air tightness in addition to thermal thermal value, uh, you get air tightness, that, that's misinformed, and that's, that's not right. And that's why I like the 2012 codes that require someone to carry out a blower door test. Because again, it becomes a yardstick that one can quantify and have values for. And, and that's where you get that understanding, that basic building science uh, that tells you that you, know, you have to do, you have to think more of a system than what you've done in the past. Builders Guides, a residential builders guide that's posted online where we have details in it that goes through all different I eight IECC climate zones um, and it has uh, prescriptive paths there uh, for meeting the 2009 code that most of the states today have adopted, uh, the 2012 code which most uh, some of the states have adopted our upcoming 2015 code, as well as achieving the ultimate. That, and the ultimate is, of course, achieving a cost-effective net zero energy building. That builder's guide and the help that we do today in going out in the field and working hands-in-hands -hands with the builder 
hands in hand with the contractor. Um, and, and putting these systems together uh, is, is a great demonstration of how we have changed as a company in trying to provide solutions to systems, to the whole building, uh, rather than just looking at, okay, this is our insulation, this is how you install insulation, that's it. We integrate all of our insulation systems, the bat insulations, the blown-in uh, fiberglass solutions, uh, our uh, uh, formula foam systems, um, and, and of course all of our air, air sealings like energy complete, our gasketing systems, our tapes. I mean, that integration of how to use these systems in a cost-effective way to provide uh, that level of, of comfort, energy efficiency. To be able to use our insulation systems in, as, a, as, a, as a system, uh, we need to be uh, a, a part of the, the overall design aspect. Because remember, one of the uh, features of fiberglass insulation that I think is kind of unique, it's bidirectional. In other words, what do I mean by bidirectional? That's, that's a big word. It means that it can go both ways. It could go, it, movement can move in, the, in, in two opposite directions at the same time. Now, you try to come up with something like that um, in, in other insulation systems. Well, no, it's, it's not like that, okay? They provide resistances. I mean, our product, um, if with the proper control elements, in other words, what are those control elements? The vapor retarder and the weather-resistant barrier that is on the outside and the, vapor, and the uh, vapor retarder or the air barrier that could be anywhere in between uh, the inside and the outside, um, we have the ability to control the flow of moisture, the flow of energy, and the flow of airflow and, and of air. So if you have that ability to control either, all of those elements right in your hands, where you want it, where you think it is of value to do, you have a much better efficiency uh, than what you do is if, if that goes with the insulation. If you go with the insulation, you, your, your hands are tied and your efficiency for controlling durability is diminished. And I think that's where uh, we have a uniqueness in the market space that's gonna remain for a long time to come because it is really difficult to beat what we have today. You will not build the same building uh, in, in Miami, Florida, and the same building in, in Seattle, Washington. You're gonna have, you might have the same occupants, but those occupants might, might behave, uh, might be, even behave the same way, but you're gonna design that building in a very different way, and you're gonna design it uh, so that it optimizes its comfort level uh, for that, uh, for that uh, particular, uh, for, for, those, uh, for, for the, that, that building. So for example, you might have the same square footage, but you're gonna have different wall structures, you're gonna have different control elements in it that mitigate the vapor and liquid flows uh, and air flows, so, um, and you're gonna pay attention to different elements in, in these two, two homes, but you're gonna design for comfort. So you're going to have all those essential elements that um, that building that is going to be comfort, comfortable uh, will also be a building that's going to provide high, high performance in terms of energy, uh, but durability, um, and, and those elements are going to be different. So there's going to be climatically tuned solutions, and that's something that um, OC is very unique. Owens Corning is very unique in uh, because we, we look at providing climatically tuned solutions that can't be found anywhere else. And, and we do that because, uh, because of the uh, um, uh, state-of-the-art building science that we can offer to our customers. When we do an analysis with a builder, we take the building, we take the walls, the roofs, the basements, we take the occupants, uh, we move these occupants in that building, and we put all of that into a, a dynamic simulator. And that dynamic simulator takes into account the wind-driven rain, so for example, if it rains outside, um, you're going to have a much humid air that's coming to the inside. Um, you are going to have vapor flows, liquid flows. You're going to have the full gamut of all the physics that, that, that is happening. At the same time, you have a teenager son or daughter or yourself, you have a shower, you have that moisture production, all of those important loads are taken into account. And that's how we define comfort. We go beyond just the mean radiant temperature, but we take into, the, uh, into account all of those occupant factors that define comfort according to the, the ASHRAE standard 55.